Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. Before we get started, just a quick thank you for getting Extreme Genes to where it is today. We're on radio stations all over America, and our podcast is growing exponentially. I'm often asked, what can I do to support Extreme Genes? Well, that's easy. Become a part of our Extreme Genes Facebook community and like our page. Share the podcast with your friends. Follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, support our sponsors through links on our website. They're the best in the business. Thanks again. Now let's get on to this week's podcast. Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma, Big Sloppin, in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. Hello, Genies, and welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And we want to welcome two new affiliates to our growing network of Extreme Genes stations, KVNU in Logan, Utah. Will Feel writes the program director there, so proud to be on his Sunday morning lineup. And in Lexington, Kentucky, WLRTAM, Benson Gregory is the station manager there and uh, excited to be on a couple of times, Saturdays and Sundays in Lexington, Kentucky. Well, we got a couple of great guests for you today. Very excited to be talking to Catherine Benoit Schwartz. Now, Catherine lives in Canada and was recently featured in an article in Good Housekeeping because she just didn't give up on her quest to find out about her birth family. And we've often talked about how sometimes these things don't come out so well, and sometimes they do. Well, she's experienced both sides of that as a result of her efforts and her DNA test. So we're going to find out more from Catherine about just what she's been through coming up in about eight minutes. And later in the show, we're going to talk to Jessica Taylor. She's the president of LegacyTree.com. We're going to talk about why it is that somebody might want to hire a professional genealogist. Don't think it's just for the rich and the newbies. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons for lots of more experienced people to use professionals. But right now on his first anniversary on Extreme Genes, let's head out to Boston and talk to my good friend, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, David Allen Lambert. How are you, sir? I'm not doing too bad out here in Beantown. How about yourself, my friend? Just doing great. I mean, there's so much happening right now in family history, and I can't wait to get to some of this. In fact, first of all, happy anniversary. One year on the show today, and I can't even imagine what it was like before that. It feels like only yesterday, especially when I go to ExtremeGenes.com and listen to that first episode every day. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now I have a new number to remember. I am now officially 198863. Oh, they finally caught up with you, huh, David? No, this isn't an incarceration number. This is my <laughs> official national number for the Sons of the American Revolution. I've been putting it off for years, and I'm finally now a full-fledged member under my fourth great-grandfather, Captain Jonathan Poor of Newbury. I think that makes us more associated now, because yeah. aren't you SAR? Yeah, I am. I am SAR, my fourth great-grandfather, Samuel Downs of Fairfield, Connecticut. So very good. Congratulations. That's exciting. Yeah, their National Congress is going to be in Boston this year. And I understand the general president is presenting me with my certificate, which makes me overly excited. Well, that's very Uh, cool. Yeah. We talk about the Rev War, but closer to home, this past week was the 72nd anniversary of the invasion uh, of Normandy on D-Day. And, you know, it's sad to think that we're losing so many World War II veterans. Every day, they're more gone. Someday, there won't be anybody to remember it other than maybe the children that were there in France seeing the troops coming in. It's amazing how time flies. One of the things that I do want to say, talking about things that you may have forgotten, Emily Nash found a time capsule of sorts over in her English home. And they were working on remodeling the house and tearing down an old chimney. They found a letter written to Santa in 1925. How cool is that? You know, makes you kind of think, did Santa have the letter, or did the poor unfortunate kid shove it up the chimney and he never got it? Right. But they don't know <laughs> who he is. And how did this affect this kid's life? Exactly. We don't know if it's a him or a her. We just know it's E period short. And in 1925, this little child, who would be over 91 now, wanted some things for Christmas, including a can and a box of soldiers, chocolate, and handkerchiefs. 
I don't know as a kid ever asking for handkerchiefs. Mm. It was obviously a different place and different day. That's like getting socks and underwear. That's true, but you know, it was listed last. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, whoever East Shore was, Santa Claus was good to him all those 91 years ago. The Olympics are always something that I like to follow, and I think Hungary has a new thing for their Olympic competition. There is a grave digging competition going on in Hungary. Congratulations to Laszlo Toff, who made this job what it is for him today. He says he has a certain style and speed when it comes to digging graves, and he actually won. Can you imagine that being an Olympic sport? That could happen. And this was, by the way, a regional version. I mean, they go on now to a, a higher competition after this. That's an amazing story. I saw that, and thinking that this might reach America... But, you know, I mean, this is by hand, not with a backhoe. Well, I'm sure people were just dying to get into this. Yes, of course. You had to go there. (laughs) Hey, listen, at least it's not Kardashian news. What I want to talk about also is we had a young person come into the library and walk by one of our paintings down on the first floor. And they said, oh, isn't that sweet? They're sleeping. I didn't have a heart to tell them, no, the person was dead. Right. It's a painting of an 11-year-old girl in the 18th century post-mortem, and this is something that's pretty common. Yeah, actually, there are entire websites devoted to these photos of deceased relatives from back in the 19th century. It's really macabre. It really is. I mean, I guess the website Dead Fred is appropriate then, because that's where a lot of old photographs that show up, especially missing relatives. Yeah. Okay, well, my tech tip for the day kind of ties into the past couple of stories we've just mentioned. And this is all the folders and envelopes and maybe even family Bibles or boxes that you've put death notices and obituaries that you and your other previous generations, your family saved. Why not scan them and make a digital scrapbook of them family by family? One, you can share it with other family members. And two, you can see what you don't have. So it kind of gives you an inventory. It's something I'm doing this summer. Very nice. Uh, And, of course, each week, NEHTS offers a free guest user database. As I mentioned last time, we have all of our New York databases available for free for the month of June. And we've also added some new sketches to our Western Massachusetts family in 1790. But I think that you'll find any of the guest user databases we have exciting. And hopefully you'll go to AmericanAncestors.org and sign on up. If you need to follow up on anything for me, you can always reach me on Twitter at DL Genealogist. And that's all I have from Beantown this week. Talk to you soon. All right, David. Thanks so much. Happy anniversary. And we'll talk to you again next week. Very good. And this segment of the show is brought to you by 23andMe.com DNA and LegacyTree.com. All right. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Catherine Benoit Schwartz, recently featured in Good Housekeeping, talking about her DNA experience, which was very positive. She kind of nullified her very negative earlier experience in tracking down her birth parents. You'll hear more about it in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest class client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. 
world and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And we are back. Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show at ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And this segment is brought to you by Roots Magic. And, you know, we've talked many times before about uh, people who go about using DNA to find living relatives. Typically, it's an adoptee. And sometimes they have a lousy experience. And and most of the time, though, in my experience with these people, it comes out quite positive. Nonetheless, I've always said you got to be prepared for whatever it is that may come your way. You've got to know what you're capable of handling. Well, my next guest has had a little of both the disappointing experience and the overwhelmingly joyous experience. And she's been featured in the June edition of Good Housekeeping. She's Catherine Benoit Schwartz. She's up in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Welcome to Extreme Genes. I'm good. How are you? And thank you for having me on. This is very exciting. I mean, your journey goes back now, what, 33 years or so when you started looking as an adoptee? Yeah, pretty much. I think I was about 19 when I kind of found my bio mom stuff and and that's when you know pretty much around the same time I went searching for my dad as well now how was it that you found the name of your mother at the time and why didn't you find the name of your father at that time well it was really odd technically you're not supposed to have an original birth certificate and for some strange reason um, my parents my adoptive parents had given me my original birth certificate to get a social insurance number which is like a social security number so I did have a piece of paper that specifically had her name, and it did say, whereas born, and it did say father unknown. So with her, I had a first name, I had a last name, so at least I had something. And I was probably 15, maybe, when I had this piece of paper on me. And um, my you know, adopted grandparents, I guess, got in their head. They would try to help me find out a bit. And we went, basically, for drives uh, to where... I was apparently born and, you know, started looking at phone book because there was no internet back then. Right. And uh, that's how it kind of started. And then I think when I got pregnant with my son, you know, I told my husband and uh, it just, the search started again. Sure. So, you know, you're, you're having a baby, you want to know a little history and you kind of, you're, you're just very maternal, I guess, the best. Sure, so that makes where, sense. Where so now, was she in the area that you had been born? Yes. Actually, her whole family had lived there for generations. I mean, they got a long history, um, yeah, hundreds of years in a very, very small town. And that's pretty much close to, I think, a part of Magog, Quebec, which is Lac Mount for Magog. Okay. And uh, that's where they were all from. And uh, I actually, uh, when I was in my teens, probably lived about 35 minutes away from there. So they were right under my nose, and more so than I even thought. My bio mom's uh, parents were really, really good friends with uh, another 
couple that happened to own a cottage, my childhood cottage when I was growing up. They were my neighbors. <laughs> Who knew? And I actually remember, it's kind of those weird things. I remember playing with a little girl, and I think that they, my bio mom's family was visiting these people at their cottage, and it was either my aunt who happens to be a year younger than me or my half sister i remember playing with her and i said i said I, I don't know how old i was but i said you should be my pretend sister and I remember <laughs> it like it was yesterday it, isn't and that crazy forward confirmed that yeah they knew they knew each other my my ex-husband actually knew them my actual grandparents sort of through church now how was it you were able to make contact with them and what was their response well, when I did find out, I mean, uh, went to the grandparents, and uh, they let me go to their house, but it was a cold shoulder, mm-hmm. you know? My bio-grandmother was kind of like a mother hen, and, you know, they showed me a picture of the whole clan of them and said, well, do you know which one your mother is? I think I pointed to everybody other than her, and uh, I don't know, I just walked away and you know i was i was probably 18 years old 19 years old I, I was pregnant with my son and i was looking at my husband and he didn't say much either i mean it was just a, a letdown you know she didn't you know my bio mom didn't want to have anything to do with me which i understood you how know? did how did that affect you at the time oh it was, that was upset i guess it was more confusing to me because my bio mom had a sister who found out about me you know, when I'm when I'm just starting to find them, she didn't really know the truth because she was younger, and she came barreling over to see me. Like they came and oh, they they were they were part of my life like immediately. And then all of a sudden, I got the cold shoulder. And then I think it's because mm. my bio mom said, "I don't want you guys to have anything to do with her," and yeah. they had to respect her wishes, and that was it done. But having said that, that's when I got the clue to my bio dad. I remember having a visit with her one day, and um, she she said, I think your dad's name is Casey Vandenberg. He worked at a hospital in Montreal, blah, blah, blah. And it always stuck in my head. So that's one good thing. Yeah, you never I, lost it. Never. And then that's when I kind of, you know, go, Nancy, you go through the phone books after that, and then bingo, you get the internet, and then that was in probably, I think I started looking again in 1990, and, you know, you're Googling Vandenberg, and then I was told he'd moved to the States. I don't know, I probably racked up hundreds of dollars in long distance bills. Sure, but finally then DNA comes along, and that kind of changes everything. Everything. Sure. It's really strange, because I kept on seeing the Ancestry.com ads. And I just thought, you know what, uh, ah, I got nothing to lose. So I decided to do it probably, let's say, last June, sent in my spittle, so to speak. And uh, it took a little while to get the results back, because I guess they're backlogged even more now. Got my results back, went on the site, and I really didn't find a close enough connection. They were fifth and sixth cousins, I think. And you email a couple people, and what do you say? Hey, I'm sure. exhausted. You have to be very cautious how you word things. Yeah. But I really didn't get anywhere, so I was, you know, disappointed, but I started the family tree on, you know, my bio mom side so I could see where I came from, and that was very intriguing. And then about, I'm going to say two months later, I saw another ad for family tree DNA, and I thought, you know what, for 99 bucks, I'm doing this again, I've got, I got nothing to lose. And that's when something really good happened. There was another match, and it happened to be a really high match, and I contacted the woman who happened to be my first cousin. And she's the one that actually, once we talked, put everything together, and she contacted my dad. And within, you know, from talking to her to talking to him, it was like a matter of hours. It was wow. indeed a shock. Well, I bet you it had to be a shock for him. What was his reaction? Well, this is the funny thing. I mean, I guess she had called him on Skype because she's in England. He's in, actually in Cape Coral, Florida. And she's talking to him in Dutch because he's Dutch. And um, so his wife, obviously, of 49 years, had no clue because sure. he didn't have any clue about me. And she's going on and on and talking to him and trying to ask him questions. He's going, no, 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 don't remember, no, 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 no. So he kind of denied. He was in denial because it's something that's being thrown at him. Sure. So thinking. Yep. He gets off Skype and he's sitting there and sitting there and having supper with his wife. And he looks at her, he goes, 
need to tell you something. And she's going, uh, what? And he says, um, there's a distinct possibility I have another daughter. <laughs> well, she just about choked on her sandwich. <laughs> 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 this poor woman, imagine. Anyway, so on Skype he got again, and I guess the memory started coming back, and yes, he did remember her, and yes, he had dated her, and yes, he had broken off with her, and obviously that's how this whole thing started. But uh, Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, you've gotten together with him since then, yes? Oh, definitely. It happened that uh, Good Housekeeping got wind of our story, and of course, we whipped down to Cape Coral at the end of October, and we had a place down there anyways we were going to for the winter, and he was half hour away, so we spent a lot of time together this last uh, winter. It was great getting to know him, and just doing fishing and having a beer with my dad was probably the ultimate. Was your heart pounding when you when you first saw him? Yes, but the good thing was it wasn't a, it was, I had met him on Skype first. Mm-hmm, right, which yes. to me was good because it's not a face-to-face immediately. Safer, and safer it, it for both of you. Pressure off. Sure, sure, that makes sense. That's great. And so now you guys get together, and I understand he's coming to visit you in Canada this week. Yes. He's actually um, my my new half brother. Bless his soul is uh, has a you know a daughter who's graduating high school. So we've been invited to go down to uh, Chardon, Ohio, and it just happened that my dad decided to spend a week with them there and staying till we show up at the party on Saturday, and then we bring him home to Canada which he hasn't been here since, I think, what, 1985? Wow. Well, you know what? I I like what you said about uh, using a second DNA company. You know, this is really important for people to understand that it's a really great idea to use them all. Go out and use them all. I do it, too. I still go on other sites. Yep. And and because you could find that the the match you're looking for is not necessarily on the place you are. So do a couple of them or three of them, depending, obviously, on how important the breakthrough might be to you. Well, you guys enjoy your new lives. And I'm sure that fills quite a hole, especially after the early disappointment. Yeah, I always say the, uh, the puzzle is finally now complete. That's awesome. She's Catherine Benoit Schwartz. She's in Niagara Falls, Ontario. She's found her birth father. He's 82. And uh, Catherine, it's been a long ways, but uh, you finally got there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Jessica Taylor from LegacyTree.com. And we're going to talk about why it is you might want to hire a professional researcher. You know, even the best researchers do this periodically. You'll hear more about it coming up in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the GrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file 
style and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And we're back. Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth. And, you know, I hear this from people a lot of times. Why is it that I might hire a professional genealogist? Most people would consider that I'm something of an advanced researcher. And yet I've talked on the show before about how I've actually hired professionals. And the question would be, why would you want to do that? Well, why would anybody? Let's talk about that with the president of LegacyTree.com, my good friend, Jessica Taylor. Hi, Jess. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Welcome great to, to Extreme here. Genes. And let's talk about this a little bit, because I'm sure there have got to be a, a million reasons why people do this. Why do people hire folks like you? Well, there are several different reasons. For a lot of people, it's just time. I mean, you know, you know, as much as yes. anybody, how much time can be involved in finding an ancestor. You know, you get started and it's exciting. And oftentimes, at first, it's pretty easy, right? You've got death certificates, you've got recent obituaries and things, but the further back you get, the longer it takes to prove who an ancestor is, and it can be really time-consuming, and we all know that, you know, we're busy, we want to get a lot of things done, and sometimes genealogy just takes a long time. You know, that is absolutely true, although I don't think there's anything I enjoy more than researching my own people, especially if I'm having success But I think for some people who have been doing it for a long time, Jessica, it's just a matter of putting another set of eyes on a difficult problem. Definitely. Yeah, sometimes we spend years working on something, and it can be really refreshing to just give that information to somebody else who can go through it, pull out the important pieces and say, okay, here's where we are. Let's try this and this and this from here. Or to have somebody go over what you've done and validate it. You know, it's nice to have somebody say, yes, you know, I agree with those steps that you took. I think that you're right on. Yeah, that's true. I I actually did that with the Mayflower Descendant Society. Not that I cared so much about whether I was part of the society, but I wanted them to validate my work. Then there have been other occasions where after 15, 20 years of pounding my head against a concrete wall, I said, you know what? I'm missing something here. Somebody else needs to take a look at this. And I've hired professional genealogists as a result of that. I bet you, you get a lot of that. We do. And then just sometimes beyond just the second set of eyes, sometimes you just don't know where else to go. You know, you've tried everything that you can think of, and, and there might be something else out there that, that somebody who does this every day knows about and can try. And so, you know, we're able to break brick walls where people say, wow, I've been working on this for 30 years and here you've done it. And yeah. it's really exciting. Well, that is really exciting too. So how can people know what a reasonable rate is when they're hiring a professional? Well, it varies a lot. Some people might just be an individual genealogist who specializes in maybe one or two things and their rate might vary quite a bit from firm that can take care of your family tree in any geography or any issues that you might come across. I know for DNA, that can vary quite a bit and and is really in high demand. So if you need help with DNA analysis, that can raise the rate. So obviously, uh, Jessica, this can be all over the place. I guess another question would be is, how do you know that you've got a genealogist with the experience that, that you're looking for or the knowledge in that particular locale? I think one thing that's important would be to try to find out what that genealogist has done in the past. If you can read reviews online, that's fantastic. If you can see sample reports and know that that genealogist knows how to access the records that you're going to need, how to analyze those clues that those records are going to give, and then how to communicate that in a way that's going to prove what you need, that's important. And so if you can get some samples, that can be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely true. You know, I I think you've probably dealt with people of all abilities, right? Not just beginners, but 
people who are very advanced and trying to progress in some other areas because no individual typically knows it all. But a firm like yours can have experts in all kinds of different areas and disciplines and time periods. We do. We try to pull people for everything that we need. And it's really exciting to be able to work with somebody in Turkey and somebody in South Africa and, you know, be able to cover these very difficult places sometimes and get people what they need because, it can be really hard to access those records or things that are in other languages when you're just trying to do this on your own. That has got to be a lot of fun when you uh, take a project and you assign it to one of your people in some country that you personally don't know a whole lot about as far as research goes, and you get a story back. Fill us in on something that you've received over the years that just made you go, wow. We do get a lot of really interesting things. One recent one, we have a British client and as we were researching, we found that in the early 1800s, there was an illegitimate ancestor. And so we recommended that the client take a Y-DNA 67 marker test. And with that, we found a cousin who was an African-American doctor in Pennsylvania. So we've got our client in the British Isles, cousin in Pennsylvania. So it turns out the family was from the Caribbean, the, the cousin's family. And his grandmother was the mistress of a British soldier. So we were able to find a match for this grandfather in the British military records. And now we're working on how this client and this cousin connect back in the British Isles. But it's fascinating because if it hadn't been for Y-DNA, we never would have thought that this family had routed through the Caribbean. So things like that, you know, are, are just really exciting. Uh, we love being able to connect people with biological family or family that they never knew about. Boy, that's incredible stuff. How many people do you actually have working for you with LegacyTree.com? Well, it's hard to put an exact number on that. We have about 15 employed people who are based here in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the Family History Library. But then we work with genealogists who can obtain records for us all over the world, and then they send us those records and we can compile and analyze and write a report for our clients. What are some of the hardest areas to research right now? Um, Greece is particularly difficult right now. There's a lot of just difficulty with the government trying to get records. We're also having a hard time in Romania. They've got archives with just some difficult rules and other things going on there that makes it hard. So we just do the best we can. And, and clients generally are very understanding when they know, you know that there's a political issue going on and things like that. We just do everything we can. All right, let's switch it the other way. What are places that in the past have been difficult that have gotten much easier in recent times? Boy, well, anything that's gone online. I mean, there's so much that used to just be very obscure and you had to go to the courthouse to get, and now we can just get it in a 10-second little search, just pull up what we need. So all the time, things are getting faster. And it's, you know, even when we began in 2004, what we could do with 20 hours of research back then is so much different than what we can do with 20 hours now because... We've got access to so much online. We can just burn through records so much quicker than we had to. I don't know. I'm sure you remember back in the days when you had to look up a census record in the book. And in a book, yeah. Crank the microfilm to get to your census <laughs> record. And it just took so long to get each one. And now you can just, you know, search and wildcard and, and pull these people up so quickly. Well, I kind of have come to the conclusion that if I had started just five or six years ago, I'd probably have everything I have right now, having done this for 33 years. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it's been a great journey all along the way. Jessica, thanks for coming on. It's great ideas about why people might want to hire a professional. Appreciate it and look forward to talking to you again soon. Well, thank you very much. Hey, we should mention, by the way, gifts. Yeah, that's a great reason to hire a professional genealogist for somebody as well. Hey, this segment is brought to you by Forever.com. And coming up for you here in just a few minutes, it's time for preservation with our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Got an interesting email from somebody asking about eight-track tapes and can you actually make things into eight-track tapes? I mean, it's a bizarre question, something you don't see every day. We'll talk to Tom about it coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. You know, 
know, everybody needs a place of their own to plant their family tree, preferably one that no one else can mess with and only you can control. That perfect place is Roots Magic. Roots Magic has been a family history standard for years, and now Roots Magic 7 is on the market. It's an award-winning genealogical software program which makes researching, organizing, and sharing your family history easy. You can start from scratch or import data from other software or even family search. Roots Magic also automatically finds records relating to your ancestors from MyHeritage, Family Search, and soon Ancestry and Find My Past. You can use it to create beautiful charts, reports, and books. And have you ever thought about making your own family history website? Roots Magic can make that happen too. And of course, there are free videos, guides, and technical support to help you along. Isn't it about time you planted your family tree? Whether you're a beginning genie or experienced professional, Roots Magic is the perfect tool for you. When someone asks what is forever.com, I tell them it's a new kind of digital storage, like for your photos and documents and all the family memories. And they always shoot back with, well, that's not a very new thing. There's Facebook Shutterfly Flickr. Then I say, oh, but on forever, you own all your content. There's no third party ads and it's guaranteed for your lifetime plus 100 years. Do the others do that? Okay, so like I said, forever.com, a new kind of digital storage. You are the chief memory officer of your family. You get that frantic phone call about the reunion in two days and they need the slideshow. And you're ready because you use forever.com. Photos, news clippings, heck, you automatically upload the photos on your cell phone every day. You have everything digitally stored and organized where you can share it privately with your friends and family. No ads and it's permanent, guaranteed for generations. Yes, you are the chief memory officer and you have forever.com. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show at ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. Hi, Tom. How are you? Super duper. We have a question here from Kevin Henney, United States Air Force. Kevin, thank you so much for your service. Kevin asks, do you still have the ability to transfer 8-track tapes to compact disc? And I oh. already know the answer to this, but this is this is so much fun that you can. Well, you know what's funny is people don't know that. We still get calls every day that says, can you transfer VHS to DVD? So people don't know this. 8-track tapes, there are so many people that do have 8-track tapes out there. It's amazing. And I'd like to thank you, Kevin, also for your service to keeping us free and making it possible that we have this radio show. But, you know, 8-tracks are awesome. We still do 8-tracks. We have people that want the 8-tracks done backwards. What? Yeah, people have like 64 Mustangs, and they have eight tracks in them. They can't put a CD player in them, so when the car shows, they don't lose points because they you know, want to win the trophies and such. And so what they do, they get like a Three Doors Down disc or a David Archuleta disc or whatever and say, hey, can you put this into an eight track? So we actually turn it into an eight track for them <laughs> so they can play it at the car shows. Oh, that's funny. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. We've got some funny letters from people, too, that, you know, people are looking around. Well, okay, where are you hiding your CD player? Is it under the mat in here? Is it in your trunk? Hey, where's your CD? And like, oh, no, it's a eight track. And they pull it out and they're going, what? How? What? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so they think they have a real eight track and it, they're really confused. Oh, that's funny. It that's is. Great. It's really funny. But yeah, we do that. We do it all the time. And you can probably talk some history from your days in radio how they actually came about. Like in the real old days, 
which is funny because cars had poor suspension back there. They actually had turntables in the cars. Now, I never saw that. I was certainly there when they started with carts cartridges in the radio business and and it did not go well no, <laughs> early on no. they were awful things terrible oh, things they were it was just it was a pursuit of money basically because they were working on the engineering of audio cassettes and it was going to be several years before they got it all fixed out and so they thought well you know what let's take these audio carts that as you know were made for commercials you push the button it plays a commercial right. and then it rhymes back to the beginning of the commercial again so i thought hey maybe we can take these and Instead of four tracks, we can make them into eight tracks, put more tape in there that like they can play a whole album on. Bad idea. Very bad idea. Yeah, it didn't work well with that. It didn't work well in the radio industry with the cartridges. Eventually, we started using them for songs, too. Wow. And sometimes they would break right in the middle <laughs> of it. And then, song's over. <laughs> and that sends you just scrambling to reach for another one and throw it in the machine and pop the button. But, uh, you know, they're so nostalgic now for so many people who came of age in the 70s. I'm not surprised that people want to have them or preserve them or at least keep what's on them. And you'd mentioned at one point that people actually recorded interviews themselves on an 8-track, which I've never done or even seen. How's that done? Oh, absolutely. Back in, I'm guessing, it probably would have been the early 70s, I bought a real nice system that had an 8-track player and recorder on it. It had the cassette and then it had a turntable on the top. And so you could go to Radio Shack and buy blank 8-track tapes and record them. So people were using them for things like that. But the biggest problem with them, as you mentioned, it's supposed to be an endless tape. They would hook them together, and there's a little piece of aluminum where it said, okay, go to track two, three, four, all the way down. Back in those days, they didn't have the chemicals that we have today to make good adhesives. So that's usually the downfall of them. That little metal tape comes off, and then they just stop. Now, there's two different kind of cases they go in. Some of them have these little lynch pins that you can pop them and take them apart and fix them. The other ones don't. And so then what we have to do, we have to cut it open. We have to get what we call a donor cell and take that eight track out, fix it and put it in a new cell, put it back together. And then we can transfer grandpa's recordings. All right, Kevin, thanks for the question. And uh, coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk about a new opportunity, a new way for you to reach Tom and ask him great questions about preservation on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show in three minutes. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that 
meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com, provide your saliva sample from home, and mail it back to a CLIA-certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And we are back for our final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show for this week. We're doing preservation with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And uh, Tom, as we've talked about on the show many times, we like to promote local people who do what you do. So Absolutely. That, so that people can find uh, somebody who they can rely on in their local area and get their materials duplicated, digitized, whatever it is that they need to have done. And I like what you're working on right now. Yes, just asktom.com is our new site, and we need your help in putting it together. As you mentioned, we want to help you to be able to do things yourself. We want to be able to use your local people. And so we want good and bad experiences. If you have a local person that you've used that you've been really happy with, let us know who they are so we can put them on our site and recommend them to other people. If you've had bad experiences, let us know about the bad experiences, too, so we can, you know, red flag them so if anybody ever asks about them. Plus, if you have a local place that does transfers and duplications and you haven't checked them out yet to even know if they would be Tom approved, so to speak, what we can do is we can send in a secret shopper, send them some videotapes, some film, you know, see how their customer service works, and then we can look to see if they're recommended because we love you to use your local people. We're available, you know, across the country if you need us. But we would really like you to develop a good relationship with transfer and duplication centers right in your own backyard. And what I'm excited about with what you're putting together here is videos on how to do a lot of the things we talk about here on Extreme Genes. Oh, exactly. We get letters that say, hey, you know, I love this segment, how you explain this to us. But I'm a visual person. I need to see how I splice the tape, how I do this. So we've got a GoPro camera. And when I'm repairing tapes, I'm going to shoot them now. And we'll put those segments up on our just ask Tom.com site so you can say, oh, this is how I fix an 8-track tape or a cassette tape or a videotape. All kinds of things we're going to put on there. Send us questions. We'll have recommendations of different kinds of software to use. But the biggest thing is we want to let you know who the trusted people are in your area to get your stuff done locally. Boy, that's great. Now, it's launching when? It's scheduled to launch the end of June, and that's all based on engineers. But it's pretty much close to going right now. So within the next two weeks, everything should be up and operating. That's exciting stuff. All right. So to reach you and talk about some of the recommendations they might have about a local transfer person, how can they do that? You can always ask me questions at asktom at tmcplace.com like we have forever. Or you can go right to our website. That's just asktom.com. And you'll see all the information. You can fill out forms to ask questions. We want to know people that you've had good experiences with so we can put them up there and send people to those. So let us know across the country all these wonderful things that happened. If you've had bad experiences, let us know those too so we can red flag people. Okay, that's all great. But wait, there's more. Absolutely. We're going to have a Tom-approved preservation sites that you can go to and learn more information about specific topics. We're going to have suggestions of equipment retailers. Everybody's looking for camcorders or they're looking for the new widgets. We'll give you places that we've checked out, and they are good and honest people. We'll put magazine articles up there and actually put links to other magazine articles. We're going to have scanning parties across the country. We're going to teach you how to do cleaning and restoration of your CDs and DVDs. We'll have Q&A forums, just all kinds of things that's really going to help our community. And all you genies need to get together, help us put all this stuff together so this website will be an awesome place for people to go and get the latest technology. This is the only way that we can actually let you know, hey, this is what's current right now. This is what you need to do. This is how you're going to do the best job of preserving all your memories. All right. Great stuff, Tom. We'll uh, be keeping an eye on that, and it's coming out in just a couple of weeks. Absolutely. 
And this segment was brought to you by MyHeritage.com. That wraps up the show for this week. Thanks once again to Catherine Benoit Schwartz for coming on from Niagara Falls, Ontario, talking about her miserable and wonderfully joyous experience in tracking down each of her birth parents. One went well, the other not so much. If you missed it, catch the podcast. Thanks also to Jessica Taylor from LegacyTree.com for talking about why you'd want to hire a professional genealogist. Take care. We'll talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.